Unresearched with Isaac Darlington. Lovely afternoon here at Radio Faith Church. I'm very excited for today. I've been having a couple of uh, podcasts before, uh, but I prefer calling those test runs. Today is the real thing. I'm excited because I have the beautiful, the amazing uh, pastor, um, Mrs. Mutengu, Judith, with me here. Excited. Uh, we're going to be talking about a number of things. A number of things. Uh, you're welcome. Thank you. To the unresearched podcast. I know we have not kutimbered the place with all of those things, but I'm excited to have you on uh, today. Thank you. Mm, how is it? How, how is your afternoon? My afternoon is lovely. It's good. It's cool. So I bless the Lord. It's okay. I spoke about getting you a, a cup of water and you didn't seem uh, interested in it. <laughs> I think it's because of the weather. Yeah, it's, it's, it's cool. It's a bit cool. Eh? Mm, it's cool. Okay, uh, so we know that, uh, I know anyway, mm-hmm. and for a couple of people out there that uh, you are um, a pastor's wife. Yes, I am. Um, me and you have had conversations before. And I've heard you speak before, and you mentioned you never, ever thought that uh, you would be in that position before. In fact, in some statements, I believe I've heard you say you did not, or were not interested in being a pastor's wife. Take us through that journey from that kind of mi- mindset, from that kind of thinking to now, huh? <laughs> Mrs. Mosumba. Oh. Okay. Hey, that is, I, I believe that's a very interesting conversation mm. that we would like to know. Okay, the reason as to why I really never wanted to be a pastor's wife mm. is because I clearly understood the responsibilities um, and what it takes to be a pastor's wife. It is not just prestige, it's not just about having the name, it's not just about having the title. And uh, having lived in a pastor's home and closely watched the pastor's wife, uh, the ordeals of uh, being a pastor's wife, the responsibilities, the expectations from the congregants and the people at large, uh, I just say to myself, no, I am not ready to carry that big load. Mm. Mm, that is why I had decided uh, in me that I wasn't going to be a pastor's wife because I clearly understood the responsibility. That the responsibility is, is heavy. Yes, that carbon. They say heavy. Heavy is the head. So that carries the crown. There's, there's something like that. Mm. For well, me, I have I this know, one which says it, there are no uh, horns that are too heavy for its head. Mm. Yes. Wow. Okay, so a little bit take us through college. How, how was college? How was high school for you uh, growing up? I know you studied between uh, sometimes Wali Kenya, sometimes right here in Uganda, that, that whole journey. How was, how was, how was that like? Uh, very interesting, and uh, I would really like to thank God that it endowed me with many experiences of mm. studying in and living in two countries. Of course, having uh, lived a bit in Kenya, mm-hmm. studied in Kenya, yes. with different culture, with the, you know different mindset. Uh, like for example, in Kenya, uh, <laughs> you know that uh, women don't have to kneel mm. before greeting. That is another full <laughs> conversation of on its own. Kneeling, so, what? <laughs> yes. But there have been a lot of debates on social media about how women should, you know, should handle some of those things, those cultural. But I think that's more of a cult- culture, uh, you know, cultural mm. things, kneeling and whatnot, mm. cooking so, food late in the night. Simani, no microwaving food. Mm-hmm. I want food straight from the from the from, sh- the, from the banana fibers. The banana fibers, the they the you. <laughs> I mean, that is a, that's a very interesting conversation. But I think uh, that's for okay. another day. Yes, but yes. Mm. Yeah, so you know, in uh, having grown up in Kenya, as parents who are working there, then you know, you you there is this uh, kind of uh, 
Um, you know, Kenyans behave more of the Western people. Mm. Yeah, they are quick, quick, chap, chap, mm. even they, in their greeting. Mm. Yeah, that's a fit. Mambo poor. There is nothing like, oh, how are you? How is home? Mm. And this I and that. Wah, people, people, eh, coco. Yeah, <laughs> you know, mm. people are, 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 yeah, they are, in, <laughs> they are always hurrying on time. Mm. So uh, when I came, uh, to Uganda to study in Uganda of course the culture I, I got a, a cultural shock mm. <laughs> I had to be reminded that I had to kneel before mm. greeting elders and yeah, I you know Ugandans were a bit slow in the things they were doing mm. you know you, you, you walk slowly gently as a lady Mm, and of course, the, the, the syllabuses, Kenya, Uganda were different, but I thank God that I managed to maneuver. And also these experiences have enriched my ministry. Mm. Yeah, I can uh, comfortably minister in Kenya, I would say comfortably minister in Uganda. I thank God that that experience of Kenya, Uganda mm. has uh, added to me. I can speak and preach in five languages fluently. So I want to thank God for that. Wow, that's something. Um, you know, we sometimes are taken through experiences to prepare us for where we might find ourselves in the future. Uh, you just said you're now able to speak five languages fluently, yes, yes. and I believe it's because of that in between Kenya and, and uh, Uganda. Uganda. Yes. Um, college life. Um, I, I'm going to get a little bit personal. Did you ever date through that college time, how was, I, I mean, I, I know it was, uh, things were a bit different. Mm -hmm. I, and I want to bring this to us now because the youth and the way we do our things with the dating and everything, okay. was, was that kind of life there even then? Or was uh, it direct courtship? You court and then straight you, <laughs> you marry, you meet someone, you courtship and then marriage. I, I get you, I mm. get you. Uh, of course, even by then, at, uh, at college, mm. uh, interestingly, our tutors used to encourage courtship mm. because, I mean, we were doing uh, the teaching course uh, we were at college and they knew that probably after college, uh, many people, the next step would be marriage. Mm. So the, the, the tutors didn't have a problem with it it's something they would encourage healthy mm. uh, courtship. But because I did not, I explained earlier on mm. that uh, the cultural shock, the, you know, I was still fighting in between there. Uh, personally, I did not uh, do the courting or the dating while at college. Reason being that I, I studied in uh, Busoga that is Kamuli, yes, Kamuli <laughs> <laughs> Teachers Home. Training College. Yes. Yeah, and uh, in me, I was not very, very comfortable with getting married to that, <laughs> mm. that tribe, mm. you know, mm -hmm. because uh, of, of the culture. These are people who would kneel even by the roadside when mm. you meet an elder. You probably uh, thought you'd, you'd <laughs> get married in Kenya. Yeah, so... My mind at that time, mm. you're right, I thought I would probably go back to Kenya because that was where <laughs> I was born. Meanwhile, and God, raised God was preparing yeah. a, a, a <laughs> oh, knockout for you here yes. in Uganda. So I, I really had no business mm. dating and uh, courtship at college. Yes. I knew I would go back to Kenya. Mm. Yes. Um, I've, I see um, you mentioned something about culture. In, in Kenya lately, I don't know if it was the same thing back then, but when it comes to growing and keeping of hair mm -hmm. uh, among the girls in school, mm -hmm. lately I see Kenya is, has embraced it, but um, some places, some schools in Uganda still do the whole mm, a lady's cutting hair cutting. Of hair. And mm -hmm. I, 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 for one, believe it's, it's really not fair because you find that in schools where there's uh, a different race, maybe an Indian and what, they probably be allowed to keep their hair. And then the African is, don't you believe that affects even our girls psychologically that they grow to a point and they're just not comfortable with their hair. Mm -hmm. So they are, they are always in wigs. They are always trying to, you know, mm -hmm. and somewhere in the Bible, it's, I, I, I read the hair is the glory of, of, of a woman. Th there is something that, yeah, yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, so could you maybe throw some light on that? Um, 
I, I would not say that Kenya has changed that tradition now. They do, only that they regulate on how the, the girls should do, make or plait their hair mm. in primary. I know that they will insist on a particular style. Yes. That is just decent enough. You plait uh, lines, you know. Conrose? Uh, yeah, is it what you call conrose. Mm. I, I don't know. Um, and then, of course, throughout mm -hmm. secondary, and yes. if you have your hair open, you 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 have it in a puff, you you know. Mm. But they they really do allow it. Um, like you said, in Uganda, uh, it is something that some schools, especially the public schools, uh, what we call government aid, government aided aided schools, yes. uh, don't allow it. And uh, you are right, parents fight with it because I, I am a teacher by profession and you know sometimes parents are bringing their beautiful daughters mm, and they are like, please, nice, yeah. please, would you allow Azima. my daughter to keep their hair? Yes. And uh, we are like, no, 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 the school doesn't allow it. Uh, the reason, however, mm. uh, the government believes that probably most children who come to those schools are uh, from middle class parents, mm. middle class families, families which are not able to take care of themselves, I would say maybe poor families. Mm. As you are aware, we have the universal primary education, universal probably secondary education. Yes. So they feel they don't want the parents to have that burden of plating the hair, but for primary, they look at the hygiene. They mm. assume that uh, maybe children at primary level are not able to keep their hair clean if it's plated. Mm. So, but outrightly, some parents are not comfortable with it. And I would say that others have just opted to take their children to private, private schools. schools because of hair. Mm. Mm -hmm. Maybe the government I think slowly has to think about it. Slowly in Uganda, we have uh, schools, we have people that have started adopting the have your hair, just keep it neat. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, long before they used to say, no, we don't allow girls with hair because it will dis dis distract them from studying. <laughs> and psychologically, if you look into it, really, it's, it's not, it doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. So, um, school, right? You are a teacher. You yes, have been teaching for quite some time. And you've gained experience. You've, in the time of teaching, interacted with a lot of students, grown to the level of a senior woman teacher. Take us through that, the, the process that made you, the process that uh, created you uh, to become who you are. Many of us now, the younger people, we are so interested in, 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 you know, in working, and we just want to, immediately we've joined, we want the highest amount of salary, we want the highest amount of you know, exposure. Mm -hmm. How was your journey, your teaching journey? How, how how did that go? Okay, thank you. Uh, I would say it uh, it wasn't uh, just easy or smooth. For context, uh, you are retired now. Yes, yes, I am a retired teacher. Mm. I, I taught for 30 years wow. and was a senior woman teacher for close to 20 years. Mm. Uh, of course, the teaching journey, the beginning mm, wasn't that smooth. But with the time, I think, after my, my first year, um, yeah, I started enjoying the job. But mm. let me tell you people, I was earning 70,000 shillings Ugandan currency. That time, that was my shillings. starting salary. But it wasn't so bad. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's yeah. like a 150,000 <laughs> of now. Yes, yes. Could just so. roughly, I, I, would, I would think. Mm -hmm. mm. So that is 70,000. But... Uh, uh, my, my, the first group of learners that I had, my first class, I just loved them. They were so interesting children. It was a private school. And uh, these were children, of course, from well-to-do uh, families. There were just two private schools in Bali. That is Elgon Primary School and Kalondu Primary School. But uh, because uh, these learners, we bonded, we had that relationship. Yeah, to the point that when I gave birth to my...
first born. They were at the ward. They were the first. They arrived before their own father. Mm. In the first five minutes, the whole classroom was out there. Come out mm. uh, because they got uh, yeah, the time I gave birth was close to closing time of school. So <laughs> they, they, by with the leadership of the um, class monitor, mm. they all came at the ward and the nurse just had to the midwives had to organize them in groups so of five, mm, six. To come, to come and work. check on, <laughs> and check the, on new, the newborn king. Yes, to come and check on, <laughs> the, <laughs> on their yes. teacher. So we bonded, and with the time, mm. I, I loved the, the teaching profession. I just loved these children. Mm. Yeah, they, 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 they would give me hope. We, we bonded a lot. Even my work as a senior woman teacher, I... I was concerned about the child right from home. We sat, we chatted. Mm. Actually, my free time, which would call break time, lunch time, I was always having students that I was talking to, yes. whether boys, whether girls. I always had them around me mm. because I'd chosen to offer an offering ear. I decided to go beyond just a teacher. And by the way, many of them call me teacher mommy. <laughs> mm. Many of them, I have those who call me teacher mommy. They are doctors, they are lab technicians, they work in high court. So they, when they see me, teacher mommy, teacher mommy, I chose to be a parent, a mother, mm. on top of being a teacher. So, yeah, it was interesting, I would say. Of course, I just had to retire due to other circumstances, mm. not because I didn't like the problem. I think there's always a beauty when you s choose to uh, select or follow a career that you have a passion in. Mm -hmm. I, for one, I'm into, uh, well, I'm into media, mm -hmm. into radio, into podcasting, which I believe is the future, by the way, podcasts. And uh, the ability for me to do multiple things is very visible. I can do almost anything in the, in the media field. Wow. And I would not need to be um you know to be coerced into doing into doing anything, anything. i can do production yeah. i can sit in front of a camera i can sit in front of a mic i can do post-production I, I will sit and edit i will sit and you know uh of course i'm glad today i have someone helping me or I, when i walked in here by the way i think <laughs> when i walked in here let me share this very briefly i had to do almost everything um wow. but it's always beautiful to have people that you can work with uh so I'm privileged that I, I have uh, Kevo helping me behind the scenes, just running around and making sure sound is good. Uh, we have the quality of, uh, you know, the camera there. It's really amazing to have friends that you can call on and work with. Wow. So, um, I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm giving us, I'm giving us this uh, context where we are moving through the life of Judith Mutengu before uh, she gets into the pastoral aspect. I mean, already we know it ends with you being a pastor's wife mm -hmm. but then it's again broader than you being just a pastor's, pastor's wife. wife there's yeah. judith mutengu that that, that, that <laughs> the teacher the <laughs> there's judith mutengu the person the student mm -hmm. the, the wife the sister mm -hmm. there is all of these things so um you even ventured into the aspect of business for those who might be <laughs> unfamiliar um business has always been on your mind yeah so you've done business as well how how, 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 how was, what, what was, and what is your experience when it comes to business? Uh, definitely when it comes to business or any work, any work that one chooses to do, you, you have to have a determination, you, you should do, have a vision, yes. and uh, yeah, you, you, you really need to put time to it. You, you have to, to have the heart to grow it, to grow it. So, and it takes more than just uh, uh, doing the business. You must love, love. You have the passion mm. for it, like you, you said. Mm. Because you, before anybody motivates you, you must be having self-motivation by yourself mm. so that other people motivate you. Because anything you do with self-motivation, you will not be coerced. You will dream bigger. You will dream higher you will go beyond just, you know, working. Actually, a time comes uh, if, if you have the passion to do something. Yes, you are working for money, but when you have passion to do something, 
at some point you may not be looking at just the money aspect of mm. it mm. because you have passion you you are doing what you love doing well business of course is not my profession but uh, we teachers are mothers of all professions <laughs> we yes. know li little bits of every profession so i would say an interesting journey i am not out of business i am still in business mm -hmm. it's just mm. changing the the business yes yeah you know you creating this relationship rapport with the customers the clients and your world gets bigger because you get to meet many people mm. you, you increase on your social capital yes. i would say so thank you all right, I'm bringing us back to the uh, t to the point of uh, uh, Judith, the married lady, and uh, the cultural shock. So social media has been crazy with the debates on uh, marriage, mm -hmm. on the duties of a woman. So many. Yes, on the duties of a woman. And now we are in a time or in a world where we have uh, people, both men and women, working. Yeah. And... Uh, we find that a man and a woman are coming back home at the same time. Both have been away, both have been looking for money. And then it comes down to the roles of a woman in a home and then the roles of a man in a home. Do you think that with the change of the times and all of that, these roles have been affected? I mean, why would a woman, I saw this on social media, come back home at the same time with a man and then have to go to the kitchen and cook? Okay. Why would a, 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 um, a man entirely have to shoulder the, the responsibility of the bills, yet his Even wife equally, wife equally works? So these are the questions that we're having. What is your take on that? Mm -hmm. Okay, I would uh, say culture affects or has affected marriage uh, at a greater percentage. And uh, I'm explaining why the man still expects the woman to go to the kitchen, yet they have arrived at the same time. And probably the woman is also expecting the man to shoulder all the bills. <laughs> you know, even our parents literally expect that when their daughter is married, <laughs> they, she's going to uh, help them financially, lift them because of the man. So um, uh, culture affects it, but my take, my take from the biblical point of view, when you go to, with, when you go to the book of Proverbs 30 about the virtuous woman mm. or wife, when yes. you read, when you look there, it is uh, talking about this woman who wakes up early in the morning, dresses her family, prepares for her family, dresses her family, uh, gets a piece of land and buys it, you know, <laughs> and then takes care of the family. And we see there that the man uh, praises her at the city gates. Um, it, uh, it shows that it is not so much, uh, of, not so much of what culture has taught us, but when it comes to marriage, uh, the two, the wife and husband, the couple, really just have to sit down and um, have an understanding. You come, you make your own government. You mm. make your own constitution. Someone okay? told me there is mar marriage is not relationships are not just black and white. You have to figure them out. No specific formula. Uh -huh. Of course, they are core values. Yes. However, mm. you part partners have to figure out what works for them. Yes, exactly what works for them because what works for couple why may not work for you mm, so you coming down uh, i'm not saying that maybe the, the the wives should not go to the kitchen mm. and the man should not shoulder all the bills mm. of course when we have house helps in the home yes. let me begin like this the wife comes in a man's life to help him mm. she is referred to as a helper Yes. Then when we have house helps in the home, they have only come to help, help the wife. Help the wife. So what I would expect there, well, it is not basically for the man to really think that yes, 
it is my wife who has cooked but it's prudent for the wife to go and at least cross check mm. yeah supervise whatever work has been done in the kitchen do the finishing and uh, if possible just serve okay but i know that there are men who really want the, the woman to do the cooking yes there are, there are men who genuinely prefer their wives cooking uh -huh. even when even, even when the household is in uh -huh. the kitchen they'll say yeah. no so uh, uh, the wife comes back maybe from her place of work at five so the man ends up eating late and you know late suppers are not good they are killing us the doctors can support us mm. those late meals we are eating are really killing us mm. but because uh, mm, people have been wired differently um, yeah they play along with it we are eating badly eating at the wrong time eating the wrong food eating at the wrong time and at the end of it yes your wife is cooking but you are having dinner at 10 at 9 which is not healthy for you, my brothers. It's not <laughs> healthy sleeping uh, with the full heavy stomach of posho, potatoes, matoke, sabba. because that is our traditional food, the supper. Someone told, you know? <laughs> someone told me the food needed in the stomach is just a fistful. Yeah. Mbu. But for us, the way we eat, that's not... Mm -hmm. um, so you eat cassava, you eat matoke, you eat posho, you eat irish, you eat katogo, there's just, the plate is just full of everything, and you're throwing that in the tummy, then going to sleep. Uh -huh, then you, you hope into the bed that is killing us so uh, i i pray that people would come to understanding some of these things are not gospel truth but we just learned them from maybe tradition from culture but literally if the two can agree if the two can agree it is not so much maybe of the food you know the more you you live together as wife and husband and you get to know each other there are things which is be very important really mm. you follow what is really what matters other things you really see you can ignore mm. so um about that i would say any every marriage has its own constitution it is about agreeing and understanding each other and taking enough time in courtship you know very well you are marrying a, a, a lady who is a working class she will be coming home are late and some i mean some some of some of them are literally picked by their husbands from work or their business place they are arriving at the same time emphasis here is just maybe for the wife to do a lot of supervision supervision yes she has to be good at supervision of the home and maybe the house help the workers at home but uh, when you really know that you know and you really know very well that your husband works, I mean your wife works, there are things which shouldn't be a problem too. Uh, maybe why some men insist on that is because uh, women, uh, maybe their wives, yes. have left the responsibilities, the bills, uh, you know, wholesomely to the man. So we have the money, the, money, the men's money, and the women's money. In, in, in Uganda, what we say, sente ye chichara, sente ye chisaja. I'm asking mm -hmm. that money shouldn't be named. The money it's is money. money. <laughs> it's Dineza your money, Kameza it's for both of you, it's for your children, mm. it's for developing. So you come in and just help one another. How that about the it. money for the table? What they call it? Um, yeah, the money for the table, of course, comes from the ideology that the, the man the is, man is the provider, yes. the sole provider. But my emphasis here is you, if the two of you can agree, you know that, okay, fine, th this time round, mm. the man's job maybe has issues, his business has dwindled. Um, you, 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 you come in, that uh, money for the kameza shouldn't be a problem. It is only a problem in some marriages where of course i've sat with women apart from being a teacher i'm a pastor's wife i'm a social worker um, you know women have a belief that even if they don't ask for that money for the kameza mm. uh, there are some men of course who are not uh, responsible they'll still give it to somebody out there to make hair to buy a dress <laughs> to eat chips and chicken so th that is the way they try to get the the money from the the men but where there is trust where there is honesty a proper functioning marriage yes the responsibilities are shared but we stick to our roles i can't be a man my husband can't be the woman no there are roles which are stipulated 
strictly in the word of God for us who read the Bible, but responsibilities you share. Wow, that is very interesting. So mm -hmm. we're coming back to the conversation, being uh, a pastor's wife, and this is, this is going to be um, the, this, this is where we're going to draw the mark and probably um, end this conversation, but all other pause because it's going to be a continuous one, yes? We'll continue with time. Um, a lot of things, you know, happen when uh, you get married to a pastor. Mm -hmm. Responsibility. Right. Responsibility. There is a lot that is expected of you by the society. I believe as a younger Judith Muteyongu, there was a bit of pressure. Mm -hmm. How did you deal with all of that? Wow. They say, now do this, now wow. you have the pastor's wife. Oh, to know. do that. Then you have, your, your house should be open to all the church members, especially back then, there is a way church was. <laughs> back then, yes. you know you're having, this, this visitor has just left another one, has come in. So, mm. how did you deal with all of that? Um, like I said before, I had lived in uh, a pastor's house, a pastor's home, uh, because my sister, one of my sisters is a pastor's wife too, so I lived with them. I had looked at the challenges and, you know, also the good bit of it. Mm. Yeah, so um, what I learned, which helped me calm down my pressure, is as a pastor's wife, one, I needed to know my identity in God. I needed to know who, uh, I mean, the, what God had called me to do my sole responsibility into the man's, the pastor, the pastor's life. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I knew what saved me from the pressure is I got to understand that I am not a pastor's wife to please everybody. Wow. Not pleasing every church member. Being a pastor's wife, to me, I learned that it is about pleasing God fast, doing what God wants you to do. Mm. Uh, what brings the pressure, uh, in the, even for me in the beginning, was uh, the, almost, is uh, sometimes you are trying to please everybody. But uh, when I got to also understand, like I told you, my identity, who am I, my identity in God first, and understanding God's call upon my life and what I was called to do in this pastor's life, my husband's life. Yes. Um, as a pastor's wife, I, my sole responsibility is to help my husband, the pastor, to fulfill the vision, the mandate that God has placed on his life. And maybe to the viewers, I would say this is where a conflict comes from. Uh, of course, uh, congregants, believers will just be in church and for them they are excited, they are bringing, um, uh, I would say, suggestions, they are coming up with the pro programs, they are coming up with things, um, and some of them don't understand the vision clearly, the vision that was given to the pastor. But the wife understands this vision very well. So. Uh, be, 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 because of that, I, I for one, had to try to, I've tried to stick, because I'm not saying I've had to, I'm still a pastor's wife, I've had to, to, to stick to that. Now, when you are trying uh, to follow the, 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 the ensuring that the, the pastor is uh, fulfilling God's mandate upon his life, many people don't understand mm. the pastor's wife. They are like, why is she being indifferent? But like I said, we know it's not about excitement. You no. have to help your husband to do what God called him to do. Mm. Lest you be like Naomi in the book of Ruth, chapter 1, from verse 1 to 5. Uh, Elimelech, who was Na Naomi's wife, husband, mm, was, you know, a, 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 a man of responsibility, a servant of God, I would say, in his own capacity at that time. So he chooses to stand up and just say, oh, let me, let us go to Moab because there is food, uh, there is plenty, I have heard that there is provision in Moab. Mm. 
Yes. So what does Naomi do? She just also, of course, in the gist of <laughs> being submissive and just jumping, we go, we go. Mm. So they end up in Moab. But Isaac, you know what happened? Naomi ended up losing. Elimelech died. Their two, two sons, sons died. Mm. And she remained a widow. And there is being a widow, but at least when you have the grandchildren. Children. <laughs> yeah, the, children. the children and the grandchildren. She didn't, children. Children. <laughs> she didn't have children, and the grandchildren were also not there. So, so you, you, she ended up with nothing, and she became bitter. She called herself Mara. So uh, being a pastor's wife, you need to, to, to guard against that. When people are telling your husband to go to Moab in court, court, let us do this. Uh, pastor, this is good for us. Pastor, we want to do this. Pastor, you want to do, we want to do the other. Uh, maybe uh, we want to dress the way we want. We want to do the, you, as the pastor's wife, you are there to regulate, to help your husband become a man of integrity. In first, in the eyes of God, and then also have integrity, you know, before the people he is standing to minister to. So um, that is where uh, pressure normally comes from. There, there is conflict because many people in the congregation don't understand you. But as a pastor's wife, I have learned I was not called to please <laughs> anybody. I, I was that is called to please God. I think that the, the same applies to uh, anybody, as long as you're a Christian anyway. Um, you ought to please the one who called you as a soldier mm -hmm. recruited or as your your goal should be to do what your master commands. We've come to the end of this, or the pause, or, or the, the point where we're stopping for now of this conversation. Um, there are people who whose intention is to marry or get married but not necessarily with purpose mm -hmm. there's people oh. who there's people who want to maybe marry because people of get title married with no purpose yeah like <laughs> okay. here's the thing um because once you're married to uh, a minister mm -hmm. your marriage is automatically ministry yes um i believe the same thing applies to not just a pastor or a minister but i think a christian mm -hmm. you, your life your marriage there's a way this it, it should reflect a certain, uh, not a certain, but aspects of God and Christ Himself. So, in a way, you're ministering to society. I believe. I believe that is, unless I'm I'm wrong about something there, but I believe that is it. What would be, or what 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 would be your closing remarks or your encouragement to people who are looking to marry, people who are looking to get married, to to ministers, uh, to probably become pastors' wives, and you know stuff like that what what would be your um thank you very much for that question it is very crucial because people are really jumping into marriage without like you said uh, well they, they they have expectations which uh, are wrongly placed yep. i would say so uh, but uh, before any marriage i would uh, i would encourage people one to you know take time to study one what do you want yourself before you get married what is your vision two uh, for me to fulfill this vision ask yourself another question is this person i want to date or i'm dating able to help me fulfill the vision in my life it could be business it could be ministry it could be any, maybe you work in office, you have a profession, you don't want to have a spouse who is going to, like we said, come and serve me matoke, I want matoke from banana leaf, yet, uh, you know, maybe the, 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 the spouse is coming from a seminar, <laughs> you know, workshop, maybe she works with uh, an organization or business, mm. or um, you, the, the wife is also expecting the husband, you see, you are not there for me, you are baby crying all the time, forgetting that the man maybe is busy, is a man who works with the people. He's, he's a person of the people. A person of the people, that is what his work is all about. Mm. You become jealousy, you run mad for nothing, you're fighting everybody. So, like I said, have a vision. Two, as you are dating the person you are dating or courtship, look at the qualities of this person you are dating or you are in courtship with. Are they able, is the person able to help you better in the vision that you have? 
and if you know yes they can't but they are if they are maybe ready to learn good but what i want to say outrightly it is very dangerous for two people to live as husband and wife but you have mismatched interests mm. that is a failed marriage completely right from the get go so, right from the word go so these are things uh, of course there are many others but i don't want to make a list one what do you want to be as you're looking at this beautiful girl you're looking at this handsome man 10 years from then from the time you have met where do you see yourself what do you want to become what are you pursuing and is that person able to hmm? so it will it is going to 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 help you uh, plan better uh, decide if you want to go on with that relationship and may i warn the young people out there that you have no power to change anybody you are meeting an adult mm. both of you mm -hmm. are adults you are not going to coerce it's not a school a school boy or a school girl no, no, some no. small girl you are just going to shout around you know try to bend the neck <laughs> remember <laughs> you are meeting an adult so knowing that you the, the, you don't have the power just to change anybody outrightly mm. uh, one for us of course as believers you would say pray about it but even as you are praying according to the vision you have get a person who matches in the vision you will have who will help you to develop at some point you have same interest yeah they may not be exactly but you can agree to disagree or disagree to agree a person who is flexible to fit in your vision because mm. you may get a man that's why we are getting like they are highly educated ladies they are having maybe bambi the man has never been to school mm. and he's not understanding the driver has dropped the wife home and then he's fighting the wife you know we we have seen all these all all these issues so that is what i would caution the young people okay yes to have a vision yourself the person you are looking for should be the one who can fit in your vision help you to fulfill that vision three you don't have power to change anybody but you can just work together if you go with the mind that okay i can change this person and uh, until they twist their neck until they fit into me if they are not the flexible type i d i wouldn't advise you to go on with that relationship just save yourself you know nobody ever died Be, you, you know it it is better to jump out of uh, an engagement than coming out of a marriage it's more painful because maybe at by the time you are jumping out of it there are other responsibilities there are children uh, you know maybe there's a lot of things involved together, they, they, they are, yeah mm. but it, it is okay <laughs> at the point of where you are still dating an engagement and you realize you will not follow fall into what i've explained before it is better you quit it don't force don't force it because you have no power to force or change anybody beautiful uh we've had a, vo a very wonderful conversation in the unresearched podcast uh we'll be having it on all the platforms i'll be communicating on all my social media uh and uh, we're going to continue having all of these conversations as we go as we move forward and uh if you want to be a part of uh the unresearched podcast if you want to partner uh, if you want to partner with us actually you all the all the details are running uh underneath the screen by now but if you want to partner with us if you want to um, run an advert of your business we have what we are starting up as the unresearched podcast is called support a brother support a sister of course uh, we're looking at the Christians in business but we're a bit wide we want we want to we want to support each other even in the field of business so um, if you want to have a reach you want to reach out have people know about your business on the unresearched podcast you reach out to me the details are running below and we'll be able to work together if you want to partner with us we have different packages and uh we'll be able to work together the unresearched uh podcast runs under the initiative heaven inventives 
and we are going to be reaching out to young people in schools, in churches, just teaching them about media, teaching them how to do some of these things, live streaming, me together with a couple of other people, uh, live streaming, how social media has impacted, you know, uh, the church and society, how best we can make social media work for us. People, whenever you talk about social media, some people you cringe and they're like ah these things they have really spoiled our children and what but for the gen z for the gen z <laughs> but we realize even when you see kenya and other places there is change that can come if you had a social media the right kind of way mm. so uh we are going to be doing this we'll be uh doing a, a different uh, uh missions reaching out to the youth to young people getting them involved in media seeing how best we can use media to serve purposes that actually make sense thank you so much pastor judith Butegu. It's been an honor. My pleasure. And I believe we will be having more conversations even as we go forward. Unresearched with Isaac Darlington.